Hello, I'm here to introduce you to the new Toro twin cylinder engine with a twin barrel carburetor and show you how it's different in comparisons to the Kohler 7000 series that was new last year and the Kawasaki FR engine that has been around for a couple of years. This engine is just a prototype, but the general ideas are here. We have some special features designed into it because of the application of going onto the time cutter Z such as the easy access for the oil drain for maintenance and the air intake system. So talking about the air intake system, we have a hinged cover versus some other brands that may have some levers you need to take off a cover or that have a hinge that's part of the actual shrouding called a living hinge. And the air filter itself pops out with no tools and you notice the air filter itself is a two-stage filter, meaning that it has a foam wrap outside the actual cartridge whereas this air filter has this mount of air cleaners design and this engine has the air filter with a thumb lock you have to loosen up before you take the air filter out and then to reinstall you have to make sure you tighten that back down. For installing our filter it's really simple you slide it in if you don't get it all the way in the cover does force it in so there's no way to really put it in wrong Another feature I want to talk about is the mechanism where the air filter sits. The shelf is actually at an angle, so the dirt and the debris gets blown past it. So when the flywheel is spinning, it has three openings that the air comes across and cleans that chamber all the time. The air intake mechanism is a cast aluminum, heavy cast for solid and rigidity, versus this brand is a polyplastic, more vulnerable if it accidentally gets impacted. And then this one doesn't have anything there, it's just a rubber hose. So the next feature we want to talk about is on the oil drain mechanism. On other machines you need specialty tools, on ours you just remove the hose, you zig and zag it, and you can drain your oil. When you're done, you just replace the hose into the holder, and now it's ready for use. It takes no tools, it's easy to do, and it doesn't need other additional items to remember where you stored them. Everything's self-contained within the engine. The next thing I'd like to show is what's underneath the shroud. You have six mounting bolts that hold the shroud on. Since this is a prototype engine, we have some of the components off already. I'll just loosen these up quick so you can see. And remove the air filter and remove the drain hose. Since this is a prototype engine, we don't have the hose attached correctly. Once you take the shroud loose, you can then see the robustness of the hinge and you can see the air filter chamber has a slanted floor and it has the three cutouts. So when the flywheel air is pressurizing and blowing the dirt and debris away from the air filter chamber. Looking at the intake itself, now you can see that we have a cast aluminum intake and the dual barrel carburetor. We talk about carburetors. So the other engines in this class of engine have a single barrel carburetor, single intake. So as the airflow goes through, it pulls the fuel in and then each cylinder will take the fuel that it needs. But if one cylinder has more vacuum, it'll pull the extra fuel and then that engine will be starving for gas and won't be as responsive for load conditions, etc. On our engine, we have a two barrel carburetor and its intake system has two separate chambers. The air is flowing through all the way from the air intake, air filter on through. So each is separate to each cylinder. Each cylinder can be maximized. It's most efficient and it's stronger and giving you the best performance possible. The other feature we designed into this carburetor is that on the choke system, when the customer pulls up on the cable and the choke is on, butterfly closes, the engine starts, then the vacuum of the engine will open up the choke and the engine won't sputter and overload. This allows for better operation of the engine plus a better user experience so then the operator can remember to go push the choke down and use the machine as it's ready to go. Also in this view, you can see how easy access and open the engine is. And in our cylinder combustion chambers, we have this cylinder head removed and this head is covered. So we have a cast aluminum valve cover. This has a cast aluminum, this has a stamped metal. So next we'll talk about the cylinder heads. This is the engine head from the Toro engine. It has a standard valve configuration of an overhead valve. And it has the combustion chamber designed at an angle. You can see the valve train is at an angle and their spark plug is the start of the flame front and it goes off at an angle. 
So when the piston comes to top dead center, it gets the maximum force and thrust from there. When you compare this head to the head from the Kohler, you can see the difference in the combustion chamber. You'll also notice that we have five bolts holding our head, whereas Kohler's using four bolts. On the Toro engine, we have a cast iron sleeve, and also our gasket has a larger surface area compared to the Kohler. So the other item I wanna show is within the pistons themselves. So this is the piston from the Toro, and this is the piston from the Kohler. They're very similar in design in the automotive and the cutaway, so they have less mass and less inertia as it's running. They both have a three ring configuration with the compression ring, a scraper ring, and an oil ring. You can tell this engine has been ran since it's got the combustion dirt on it. And the one thing you can see different is the rod size in the journal. Next, we'll rotate the engine and show you the underside. All right, so here's the bottom side of the engine. And the first thing you'll notice is that the oil pump mount fits here. And the oil pump itself is clamped in with a heavy steel plate and a heavy O-ring and then the rotor pump itself as it rotates displaces the oil. Because it's the lowest part of the chamber, it's going to give you oil pressure regardless of your volume of oil. If there's any oil left in the motor, it will still give you oil pressure and lubricate your critical components. So after you remove the bolts, you slide the sump cover off and you'll notice that our sump cover has a complete gasket on it, whereas other engines have silicone in this area. Another thing you can make note of is how our oil drain hose is at the lowest point of the block and these other cavities are cross-drilled so that the used oil can drain through and come out the oil hose. Also, I'd like to point out that the governor's spool has three flyweights rather than two flyweights to give better governor response and quicker performance. When the engine is running, the fresh oil goes in through a screen intake into the oil pump. The oil pump is driven by the camshaft. Then it follows the chamber to the hole that goes to the oil filter. From the oil filter, it's returned and goes through this channel into the actual double bearing. From the bearing surfaces, then it goes into the crankshaft, follows the crank into the rod journals and to the upper bearing. That's your pressure lube loop. The other component in the assembly we want to discuss is the camshaft. It is a composite, meaning it has a nylon gear on the metal shaft. The gear itself is nylon for two reasons. One, because it's less mass, it doesn't weigh as much, so it gives less load on the engine as it's rotating. You don't have to be spinning this weight and taking energy away from our power to the crank. The other part of the nylon gear is that it's much quieter running against the metal gear of the crankshaft. There you have it, the all-new Toro V-Twin two-barrel carved engine, designed specifically for the time cutter chassis. Don't forget the key features, the easy to use oil drain hose, it's self-contained, no tools required, and the heavy duty air filter and air intake system, the cast aluminum intake and the two barrel carburetor with the vacuum release. And don't forget this is a Toro engine. So technical support, service parts, warranty, all come from the Toro company, a one-stop shop for you. That's all I've got. Hopefully this has been helpful and informative for you. Thank you for watching.